Hello everyone, it's Dr. Maxine Schramka, the Rheumatology Doctor, here for another Sunday series of Rheumatology. I hope you've had an amazing Sunday. My day's been amazing, caught up with friends, had some meetings, went shopping, made a beautiful meal, friends are coming over later on, which is fantastic, and I'm celebrating by wearing my new jacket. For those of you that don't know me, I love jackets, and for those of you that know me know that I really love jackets, so... <laughs> and clothes and other things like that. But anyway, we digress. This is all about you. This is about rheumatology. And today we're going to talk about ankylosing spondylitis. Ankylosing spondylitis is a condition where you get an immune inflammation of the spine. Um, it typically affects the sacroiliac joints, which are the bum joints, um, and can affect multiple levels in the spine. It can also affect joints outside of the spine, but usually begins in the spine. And people of the habit can have symptoms on and off for many years before the diagnosis is made. Often people feel like they overstrain themselves in the gym in their teenage years or their 20s and get back pain and back stiffness for a few weeks and then it goes away. And it's not until 10, 20 years later that they start getting more consistent symptoms. And the symptoms that are really typical of ankylosing spondylitis are feeling really stiff particularly in the area that's inflamed, often around the bottom joints, which are the ones, you probably can't see me, but the ones right down there. Often some people refer to these as the hips, but I refer to them as the bum joints, the sacroiliac joints. There's one on each side. Um, and that can move from side to side and can go into the buttocks and can sometimes go down to the legs as well. And there can be stiffness in the thoracic area, either low down or between the shoulder blades or in the neck. And it all depends on which part of the spine is inflamed. The most common area that people get affected by are the sacroiliac joints, however. Um, there can be swelling in other joints as well, um, but the swelling is often not really big like with rheumatoid arthritis. It can be more of a stiffness and a bit of swelling in the joints, but as is the case with everything in health and well-being, everything is different for each and every single person. So it's quite an important condition. It tends to affect men more than women for reasons that we don't really understand. And it's something that I see quite a lot of in my practice and I really enjoy uh, seeing people with this condition because there are great treatments for it, which is fantastic. In terms of diagnosing it, um, it's based on the history. So how are you feeling? Are you stiff in the mornings? Does your pain get better with activity? Because typically immune inflammation pain is worse in the mornings worse on rest and gets better with activity. So a lot of people find that they have to wake up early in the morning, they get up and they move around, they stretch a little bit, and then they ease it off and then they can go back to bed and go back to sleep. So the story of the nature of the pain is really important for making a diagnosis. Um, and then of course we do blood tests. Always in rheumatology we do blood tests. So we look for high levels of inflammation in the blood. Um, we'll test for a marker called HLA-B27 because if that's positive, then that's strongly associated with the condition. And of course, we do x-rays and MRI imaging, which is very important to help us make the diagnosis. Usually do we do x-rays of the affected areas and usually we do x-rays of the sacroiliac joints if the diagnosis is suspected because sometimes there can be changes in these joints on x-ray even though the joints are not symptomatic for a person, which is interesting. Um, if nothing is showing on the x-rays, we'll do MRIs. MRIs are obviously more expensive, uh, a little bit more um, stressful to have because it's quite a narrow tube and some people can get claustrophobic when they have it. So we'll do that if we don't get enough information on the x-ray imaging. And that should help us make a diagnosis and then we go to treatment. And treatment is very individualized, of course. And um, Basically, the crux of the treatment is symptom relief when you have flares, because people can have flares and then they can have periods where they feel totally fine, and other people have symptoms all of the time, and it's very unique and very individual for each person. So we treat that symptomatically with anti-inflammatories or painkillers as needed. Exercise and stretching is a really important part of management, and if those things aren't working out, and if other lifestyle measures are not working out, we can implement uh, medications called the biologicals, which have completely transformed the treatment of this disease, in my opinion. I'd like to speak a little bit more in detail about the treatments for ankylosing spondylitis in a separate video to allow us a little bit more time to explore it. So I'm going to wrap up now the little synopsis of ankylosing spondylitis. Um, if you have any questions, 
please get in touch. I'm happy to answer them in further videos and I hope you have an amazing evening. Goodbye for now.